our guest is Tuba Chandar, who is the author of a biography of Hranting called Hrant which made quite an impact uh, in Turkey when it was published and it simply serves to point up the great deal of uh, hope and expectation and thought that has gone into uh, the evolution of Turkish society, Turkish politics since Hrant's assassination. I hope that's a fair assessment, Tuba, and I hope you'll tell us um, You'll tell us what you wanted to do with the book. Why a book on Hranting? A, a, such a big fat book, in fact. Yes, it's a book of 700 pages, actually. Um, and I worked three and a half years on this book. Why this book, uh, Sarpi? This book, because Hrant was a friend. And he was assassinated in front of us, in front of our eyes. Well, on the pavement of his offices of Agos building. And we all witnessed this assassination and we were all shot. It was not Hrant only who was shot. We were all shot by that day. And, but uh, Hrant died and we survived. So I had to do something. The only thing I could do is to write a biography because it's my, my job, it's my work. Uh, I wrote Rand's biography because I wanted uh, him uh, to be known and not to be forgotten. Not only in Turkey, also in the whole world. And now this book is being translated into a different language and actually yesterday so as this uh, terrible verdict uh, was fallen, I signed an agreement with an agency in London uh, to publish Hrant's book in foreign languages. That's wonderful, because I think that one of the things that's missing in this whole discussion about Turkish-Armenian relations is the fact that when movement is made, when change is made, it's made on two levels. One is the people-to-people -people level, and the other is obviously the political level, Ankara and Yerevan. And Hrant was one who understood that. And as passionate as he was about his thoughts and his opinions, he understood there had to be a political solution. So I think a book about Hrant and all of the things he did would be very valuable for this conversation. The fifth anniversary seems to be uh, as important uh, in, in Turkish society as you know, the, the first anniversary and the second. It doesn't seem as if memories have faded. No. Uh... Fortunately not, because, you know, our friends in the Turkish pre press, uh, uh, in, on Turkish television or in the uh, Turkish written media, are doing their best that uh, this, this case will be always fresh and Hrant will be always kept in our memories. Do you think that as, as much as we see change in some segments of Istanbul uh, society. Do you think that there's also change outside of Istanbul or is this really still just an Istanbul phenomenon? No, I don't think so because, you know, there is, for example, a, a, a big population of Kurdish uh, uh, minority in Turkey, you know, which is about 15 million, they are all interested in Hrant's case uh, and they are living in the southeastern part of Turkey not only in Istanbul, as you know. Uh, my book was, for example, very well sold in Diyarbakir, in Malatya, in Ankara, in Izmir. It's not only Istanbul. Uh, people all over uh, Turkey, you know, because uh, Hrant's issue is a, is a collective consciousness issue. So, uh, all over Turkey, people are interested in it. Who have, who have consciousness? Please tell me a Hrant story and then we'll let you go. <laughs> Hrant story. Hrant was a, a, a journalist like us, but he was of Armenian origin. That was the only difference. He uh, struggled with us together for the Turkish democracy because, as you know, uh, 
we had uh, military coups in every 10 years and the Turkish democracy was always interrupted by these uh, military interventions. Hrant fought f uh, with us for the Turkish democracy. But in addition to that, Hrant was the, uh, the secular voice of the Armenian minority in Turkey. And he was actually the first one who spoke for the rights of his people, of the Armenian uh, minority. Uh, Hrant was a brave man. He was outspoken. He was daring. Uh, that's why he was called Hrant by his friends. That's why my first book, you know, my book is actually a book in two books. The first book is called Hrant Hrant uh, because, as I said, he was a daring, out, uh, outspoken and headstrong personality. And this uh, Hrant Hrant uh, tells the story uh, from his birth in Malatya uh, till, he, uh, till he becomes the founder of his newspaper, Agos. And the second book is called Baron Hrant because uh, Baron was the word where uh, his, uh, his colleagues uh, in the newspaper uh, called him. Baron Hrant, they used to call him. Uh, Baron Hrant starts with, it, with the founding of his newspaper, and um, it, it consists of five uh, parts. It is looking, seeing, touching, knowing, and dying. It seems every time you and I talk, we get weepy. I will stop now, say thank you. Thank you for the book. We hope to be able to read it in English and also in Armenian. And I hope to talk to you again uh, in the weeks to come. Thank you. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Tuba Chandar from Istanbul, author of Hrant's biography, Hrant. Mm -hmm.